friends. So, today we will discuss again one more case study and this will focus on indoor air quality in nursery buildings. Uh, this is a case study taken from uh, one uh, report of UAE. So, this will uh, be included uh, like in this contents. So, uh, this is the contents list according to which we will uh, go into this presentation like uh, first of all we will introduce the problem setting in which context this case study has been carried out, what are the materials and methods which have been used to conduct this study. Then different measurements of indoor air quality in terms of pollutants concentrations we will see then what are the you know changes in air quality concentrations over the period of time so that we can see the variation as per uh, different uh, uh, you know regions. And then we will see like air quality improvement installations which can be done in those nurseries which are under the consideration or under this study so that air quality can be improved. So, whether those improvements are there or not there. So, according to the uh, you know changes which have been made in those nurseries like installation of air purifier or changing in the building finishing materials or installing some new ventilation system. So, according to those uh, changes uh, the comparison of indoor air quality will be made. So, that we can uh, see or we can find which particular uh, change is effective then uh, we will conclude. So, you can see uh, this uh, you know particular data like uh, as you know the infant or children they breathe very frequently. If you uh, you know compare our uh, you know adults breathing patterns and uh, uh, you know the way uh, children breathe, they breathe very frequently and uh, you know their speed is also uh, higher. So, in that uh, you know way uh, they basically inhale indoor air around 400 milliliter per minute per kg body weight if you compare with that although their breathing you know is uh, uh, means it is long not so long as we breathe it is not so deep, but still if you uh, you know calculate or estimate how much uh, amount of the air or how much volume of the air they are inhaling per minute per kg weight of the adult then the comparison is like 400 milliliter per minute. Uh, per kg body weight is inhaled by children and adults uh, you know inhale around 150 milliliter per minute per kg body weight uh, in case of this adult uh, size population. So, huge difference is there that means uh, the inhalation is much more in case of children. So, if air is polluted that means most uh, you know uh, means uh, the large quantity of pollutants may be inhaled by children if they are living in that polluted indoor environment. So, the importance is very uh, significant in that sense because like in nurseries or play uh, uh, you know schools if chil children are uh, living there for several hours and if their uh, conditioning is not good, if their indoor environment is not good then we will see that children will be inhaling polluted air and that can you know uh, cause certain health issues also respiratory problems or other diseases can be there even like sick building syndrome can be there or some symptoms related to eye irritation those kind of things may be observed in case of children. So, we need to ensure that wherever our children are playing or living those indoor environment must have clean air. Okay. To reduce with the aim of reduction of these adverse effects which is possible because of polluted indoor air, we want to go to improve the indoor air quality and that improvement can be uh, you know uh, ensured or uh, can be achieved by uh, three methods which are quite popular like either we can control the sources of the pollutants whatever sources of the pollutant to deteriorate the indoor air quality if we can control those sources then naturally we will improve the indoor air quality or we can improve the ventilation. So, in case there are some sources the ventilation will ensure that fresh air comes and the polluted air goes out or we can also remove those pollutants by certain devices like air purifiers. Okay. So, those kind of devices can be fit into the indoor environment and the air quality can be improved. Well, so in this particular case study uh, 16 facilities uh, have been studied. Uh, in terms of indoor air quality of those facilities and this is uh, the case of nurseries in UAE. And uh, after applying those uh, some improvement uh, measures uh, and before the you know installation of those measures air quality have been measured and comparison have been made. So, that before uh, installation of some devices or carrying out certain changes to improve the air quality uh, what, what is the air quality uh, 
uh, before installation of those devices and what is the air quality after installation of those devices. So, that we can know the difference whether those devices or those measures are effective or not. So, that, that kind of study has been conducted in this particular case. Well, when we talk about general materials and methods uh, to improve uh, you know indoor air quality. So, basically three major things are there as just we have seen like ventilation control at the source or purification and those devices like to control the source or control the emissions at the source. So, maybe something can be done like low emission related building finish uh, finishing materials can be used because as you know like uh, furniture or the uh, wall paints or there are so many sources of indoor air pollutants. So, if you go for good quality of furniture may be low emission can be ensured or either you can do some bake out related uh, you know measures or methodologies. In bake out basically uh, the indoor uh, and environment is heated and because of that heat you know those VOCs volatile organic compounds and those kind of air pollutants they went out and then uh, you know very least amount of emissions are observed afterwards. Another method is well like ventilation improvement. So, ventilation improvement can be ensured either through natural ventilation or through mechanical ventilation as air conditioning is there, exhaust fans are there, those, those devices can be installed. So, it can increase the indoor uh, you know inflow of the air from the outdoor, but we have to ensure that outdoor air is cleaner than the indoor air. If you are uh, you know bringing the polluted air rather than improving it can deteriorate the air quality of the indoor environment. So, if outdoor air is clean then this works this ventilation system works otherwise other uh, devices can be like removal of the pollutants through air purification devices through absorption or through filtration or uh, decomposition of the pollutant through some catalyst uh, uh, devices catalyst based devices. So, those air purifiers can be used to improve the air quality. If we talk about like uh, you know the studies which have been uh, carried out uh, in terms of indoor air quality. So, mostly those uh, studies have been in micro environment of let us say like residential buildings or maybe certain office buildings. Only very few studies are there uh, focused on uh, nursery uh, where children are uh, you know uh, living uh, in indoor. So, those indoor air quality of nurseries uh, related studies are very few. So, based on you know basic indoor air quality improvement plans uh, like installing air purifiers or changing the building materials or installing some ventilation facilities or systems uh, uh, those uh, you know nurseries which were taken into consideration for this study like 16 nur nurseries have been taken. So, these three major uh, you know changes have been made and before uh, making those changes air quality was observed and after making those changes air quality was observed and the comparison was made. So, that uh, it could be seen whether the air quality has been improved or not. And the materials and methods which have been used are uh, related uh, you know like uh, observations made uh, uh, pertaining to temperature, humidity, then carbon dioxide levels, total suspended particulate matters, then formaldehyde and volat volatile organic compounds VOCs. So, how much quantity of these pollutants are there? So, those were measured in uh, total 35 classrooms which are belonging to these nurseries basically. And for each indoor air quality pollutant you know those target rooms. So, the degree of contamination was compared with the standard values of WHO IAQ standards which are given basically those uh, World Health Organization they also pre prescribe some standards for the indoor air quality. So, the observations were compared with respect to indoor air quality standards of the WHO. And based on those uh, you know measurement results uh, and uh, uh, you know taking into account the managers of those nurseries. Uh, so, they have made some request. So, the improvement of indoor air quality of the target facility and certain improvements techniques uh, were obtained. So, this was a kind of participatory uh, case study where researchers and uh, those uh, clientele you can say or those uh, people stakeholders uh, were uh, you know they, they opined and their opinions were uh, taken into consideration to design the study. So, you can see here like measurement items which were uh, 
measured uh, like temperature, humidity or CO2 and formaldehyde, TBOC or TSP total suspended particulate. So, equipments which were used for measurement of these entities are listed in second column and uh, sampling time is also given like uh, for how much frequency or sampling was uh, you know done for each kind of entity. So, this is uh, measured here or mentioned here. Now, if we try to see what is the measurement data. So, this uh, dotted line is basically the WHO standard like in case of CO2 920 ppm is prescribed by WHO standard that should not exceed in indoor air environment otherwise suffocation will be there we will be feeling suffocated because oxygen will be less CO2 will be more in the indoor air environment. So, this uh, you know standard 920 should not exceed, but the measurement show that in several rooms like here you can see these points which are exceeding ok, these are exceeding the WHO prescribed uh, guidelines of CO2. So, uh, this is worrisome issue basically you can see, but outdoor this blue line outdoor environment CO2 is less than the prescribed one. So, that way means you can imagine if we uh, bring the outdoor air uh, inside by through ventilation or th uh, some other system, then maybe these kind of concentration can be reduced. But if we look into the data, statistical data, how many rooms or uh, facilities are there which are having very high concentration of CO2. So, uh, you can see like 7 facilities which are given, names are given 01 FU, 0, 04 ID. So, those kind of names are given for those facilities and 11 nursery rooms around 37 percent of the total facilities and rooms were found uh, you know uh, having CO2 uh, much more than the WHO standards. And the source of this CO2 pollution is because of you know breathing of the children and uh, staff members because every time we are inhaling and exhaling. So, when we are inhaling then we are consuming oxygen, when we are exhaling we are you know uh, exhaling basically the CO2. Right. So, that CO2 is built up, the concentration built up if there is no proper ventilation, that is one uh, basic fundamental reason. So, those uh, you can see the sources are uh, our own breathing, children's breathing and staff's breathing. Now, among them in case of facility 01 FU and facility 14 RO, both classroom approached around 2000 ppm like more than twice of the prescribed standard. So, that is very worrisome basically serious issue because in those uh, uh, rooms a uh, lot of suffocation and uh, uh, will be felt and uh, that environment is not uh, good uh, for uh, learning or playing for the children. Okay. Now, if we look into this indoor air quality measurement results. Uh, in terms of total suspended particulate matter TSP. So, the WHO standard is 100 microgram per cubic meter. You see this line dotted line is 100 microgram per cubic meter of the TSP total suspended particulate matter. Good thing is that in all most of the facilities or rooms the concentration observed of TSP is less than the prescribed limit means it is not exceeding, but at certain places like this particular location you can see outdoor as well as uh, you know indoors room 1, room 2 they are having higher concentration of TSP. Similarly, at 16 BL you can see this uh, room 1 is having almost a similar TSP, but the this outdoor and uh, the room 1, uh, room 2, room 2 and outdoor they are having uh, more concentration of TSP. That means, this TSP may be coming from outdoor into the room number 2 that may be one reason means we have to look at the real site. So, if we compare these total suspended particulate matter related data you will find that 16 BL facility is having high concentrations of TSP ok and 08 KI also they are because these facilities are nearer to industrial and commercial areas basically. So, TSP you know sources may be from those industrial activities or commercial activities. So, uh, we have to take care maybe some uh, major some measures have to be adopted to reduce the inflow of TSP from the outdoor environment right. So, the influence of the dust has to be reduced surrounding construction sites or factories may be there and the low vehicle uh, flow may be there. So, those kind of interventions are required to reduce the TSP concentration into the indoor environment. So, in case of this total volatile organic compounds this uh, WHO prescribed standard is 400 microgram per cubic meter and this is the line you can see here. So, again we find that TVOC is exceeding at several facilities or rooms of the nurseries. You can see here you know this 02 DO and then 05 KA 
and uh, it is very high concentration of TVOC here uh, both room 1 and room 2. Although outdoor uh, air concentrations of TVOC are less than the prescribed one, right. So, you can see the comparison this 16 BL facility indicating higher concentrations of TVOC and other places also uh, in room 1 and room 2 you can find here higher concentrations of TVOC. If we compare the formaldehyde uh, with the you know uh, measurement data and the WHO standards, WHO standard is around 100 microgram per cubic meter you can see here this dotted line and we have observed or measured means uh, we have taken from the case study. So, those researchers who have measured this data we can compare. So, in many you know facilities or sites the concentration observed of indoor environment as well as outdoor is less than the prescribed limit. Although here uh, you know this outdoor is having almost uh, similar uh, to the prescribed limit, but here it is exceeding both outdoor as well as uh, indoor environment. And in these facilities like 11 OR, 12 AM, so these facilities also having higher concentrations uh, like in room 2 or uh, room 1 as well as in outdoor particularly in this particular location, right. And again here also it is exceeding. So, we have to look into those facilities uh, whether in nearby areas some sources are there of the formaldehyde or majority of the formaldehyde basically comes from you know furnishing and other uh, indoor environment basically. So, we have to look into those localized sources and can we do something uh, through purification or through ventilation can we reduce them. So, uh, you can look into these comparisons and at several locations it was found that formaldehyde is exceeding uh, the prescribed limit those kind of you can see here. Okay, now, we want to see in whole day how these concentrations vary for different pollutants. For CO2 you can see like uh, you know 6 am to 9 am uh, the concentration of CO2 is this much and then 9 am to 12 am the concentration has increased like average value was around 798 and now it has increased average value around 1556. Then uh, you know 12 pm to uh, uh, these 3 pm uh, ok. So, this has reduced up to 11 uh, 98 p ppm. So, basic idea of this uh, you know CO2 uh, variation is because when 6 am 9 am uh, least activity is there it is opening and then when uh, you know children are coming staff is coming then CO2 exhalation is much more. So, in this particular time uh, you know lot of pollution uh, built up is there and CO2 concentration increases. Uh, then up to 12 pm uh, you know uh, children go and some staff is there. So, slowly this uh, CO2 uh, concentration decreases basically. So, uh, you can see the diurnal variation is there, uh, there is a low CO2 then it increases then again it uh, starts to decrease according to the school time basically. If you talk about the total suspended particulate matter similar variation is there as it was observed in case of CO2. It is less uh, during morning hours 6 am to 9 am when uh, you know activity is lay least because children are not there. At 9 am when children uh, comes then uh, doors are opened, windows are opened. So, the TSP uh, you know that may come from the outside also and that uh, this uh, it becomes almost double. Right. Then again after 12 pm when uh, uh, children have gone only staff is there. So, the concentration of this TSP decreases. Formaldehyde having a completely different pattern 6 am to you know 9 am very high concentration of formaldehyde is there inside and when school is opened then formaldehyde concentration goes down and further it goes down up to 3 pm. The basic reason is because formaldehyde sources are inside the uh, those rooms of the nurseries because of furniture, because of paint or those whatever sources of those formaldehyde is there. So, there is no ventilation whole night it is closed. So, the built up of formaldehyde is there and when uh, those measurements were taken uh, from 6 am to 9 am. So, high concentration of formaldehyde was observed, but later on when ventilation came into effect because uh, the rooms were opened and then uh, you know because of dispersion and uh, diffusion through air movement this decrease of the formaldehyde have been observed. The similar pattern have been observed in case of total volatile organic compounds TVOC. So, again VOCs are also emitted in uh, large quantity from inside sources whether paints or 
uh, you know furnitures and uh, other uh, kind of activities. So, the same pattern is there because the concentration built up during night there is all things are closed, windows are closed, doors are closed. So, uh, there is no escape route for formaldehyde and uh, this uh, total VOC volatile organic compounds that is why they are high in concentration and then uh, later on they goes down. Now, so uh, you know then uh, it was uh, discussed with those nursery managers and some improvement installations were uh, uh, installed in, in inside the nurseries. So, some nurseries were uh, you know taken for uh, like installation of air purifier ok. Uh, so, that uh, that purification acti activity could be done through certain devices. Some other nurseries were taken into like uh, changes in the building material, furnishing material. So, that we could compare if some change is made, so how much improvement in the indoor air quality is there. So, some lot, uh, some group of the nurseries were provided only air purifiers, some were not provided air purifiers, but changes were made into building material and other group was like installation of new ventilation system. So, three groups were divided and three you know interventions were made in terms of application of air purifier or change in the building material inside the uh, you know indoor environment and installing new ventilation system. So, now you can see like this one was the uh, this air purifier group, then building material related group and new ventilation group. So, in uh, this uh, air purifier group basically out of 16, 10 nurseries were provided and out of 6 facilities you know uh, into 3 change of the building materials were made and our remaining 3 and this installation of new ventilations were ensured or made. So, you can see now the effect of uh, these uh, air quality improvement installations. So, group A like total 10 nurseries the number is given and then uh, you know these uh, air purifiers uh, were uh, uh, you know run uh, by those uh, electric uh, power and they could uh, do uh, like uh, filters were there, HEPA filter and uh, order could be reduced because of uh, you know they are having that kind of filter which has property of antivirus. You can see antivirus HEPA filters. So, odor remover was there plus particulate matter was removed in a uh, up to 0.3 microgram. So, fine particles were uh, removed basically. So, basically you know this air purifiers were uh, of that nature which could remove odor as well as very fine particles up to 99.9 .9 percent uh, removal was there. Then uh, uh, you know in group B the change of finishing materials uh, were made inside the uh, those rooms or facilities. So, eco friendly building materials were used in place of the old conventional ones. So, that uh, uh, you know uh, like least amount of these VOCs or formaldehyde could be emitted from uh, those uh, particular new materials which are eco friendly ok. And then uh, the group C were uh, related to ventilation system. So, new ventilation system was provided and the system was uh, related to like uh, uh, this uh, exhaust uh, system uh, around 250 cubic meter per hour uh, fresh air could be taken into uh, the indoor environment. So, diffusion uh, could be ensured properly and the temperature humidity control could be uh, also provided uh, with this kind of uh, ventilation system. So, uh, means then comparison was made that the uh, readings were of those pollutants before the installation of uh, any, any method ok, before the installation of any method whether air purifier or new ventilation or the building material. So, what was the concentration of a particular pollutant before that installation and what was the uh, you know the concentration of that pollutant after um, uh, you know those measurements were uh, taken into account. So, the difference of that divided by the measurement results before the improvement and uh, you know multiplied by 100. So, how much percentage uh, reduction rate is there that could be easily measured. So, you could see like around uh, in uh, when uh, this air purifier was installed around 46.3 percent uh, uh, you know TVOC highest TVOC removal was observed basically in certain locations and the TSP was removed or reduced around 21.7 percent, CO2 was around 18.6 percent. So, air purifier was very good in case of TVOC total volatile organic compounds the reduction maximum was observed of 46.31 uh, uh, percent. Then 64.2 uh, 64 percent 
in room 2 and 60.9 percent in room 1, the CO2 concentration was observed. So, that way in different facilities you know different reduction of different pollutants were observed. The concentration of the formaldehyde and T TVOC in this facility 09 AK were around 84.9 percent, 86 point percent in room 1, 91 percent and 96 percent in the room 2 respectively. So, showing highest concentration reduction rates. So, different pollutants had different uh, you know reduction rates, different facilities in nurseries as well as uh, rooms. You can see like 91 point uh, percent of the removal of this TVOC highest uh, percent is there in some percentage 64 and other like 96 to 91 you can observe. Then in building material changes, so they again uh, could see the average reduction rate of formaldehyde and TVOC around 178 percent or 380 uh, percent means this is huge reduction basically in case of formaldehyde and total volatile compounds uh, by changing the building materials because those are the basic sources of these uh, volatile organic compounds and formaldehyde. So, you can see these kind of changes reductions were very high in, the, in those cases. When new ventilation system uh, was installed in certain groups in certain facilities, so around this formaldehyde reduction was uh, 79 uh, percent, TVOC reduction was around 52.94 percent. So, different facilities have different effects because they were uh, exclusive. It was not that the same facility was provided uh, with all these three uh, installations at different locations, so that we could compare uh, you know the effectiveness of these uh, systems in particular facility, but different groups were there and we could uh, uh, you know see their uh, effectiveness or their uh, efficacy. You can see here uh, you know this 75 percent efficacy or efficiency of CO2 reduction is there by new ventilation system in particular this 15 GA2 facility. So, in conclusion we can say that uh, the nursery's indoor environment is very important to uh, you know ensure the good air quality. And there are methods whether it is uh, through ventilation or through air purifiers or changing the furnishing uh, building furnishing material so that we can improve the air quality. And this case study gives us insight that which kind of intervention could uh, really target which particular uh, pollutant inside the uh, micro environments. So, that way you can have uh, you know good uh, insight and information based on this uh, nursery related case study and it can be replicated into other uh, kind of setups or micro environments. So, this is all for today. These are the references for additional information. Thank you for your kind attention. See you in the next lecture. Thanks again.